it's no fun when deals fall through. <laughs> you can also leave a lot of money on the table, especially for deals that should complete but don't. Well, because of what seem to be irreconcilable differences between the buyers and sellers of small and mid-sized businesses. In this podcast, you're going to hear about revival, getting back on track, deals that should occur. You're going to hear M&A attorney Scott Weevil tell us about how we revived a troubled deal, a deal that was worth doing. I'm Ted Leverett, broadcasting from PartnerOnCall.com. I'm the original business buyer advocate. For more than 30 years, I've been helping people find and buy the right businesses the right way. Okay, Scott Weevil, let's talk about transforming potential no deals to done deals. And let's sort of set the stage. What's the attorney's role in, in a buy-sell transaction? Sure, and thanks so much for having me today, Ted. I mean, obviously, as you would expect, one of the attorney's key roles is the legal terms of the deal as they manifest themselves in the deal document. But what's probably more important in a small and medium-sized business transaction is that a deal attorney has done this. They've been through multiple transactions, whereas a client, whether buyer or seller, this may be their first time buying or selling a business, or it may be one of a handful of times. And the attorney is going to know what common deal terms are, so to speak, whatever the, men the menu is for the transaction and what's appropriate under a given set of circumstances. And that sort of ties in to what I call the deal-making philosophy. And I think my philosophy as a lawyer is I want to get deals done. So my goal is to protect the client for sure, but also not be perceived as inflexible on minor points because inflexibility tends to make you be perceived as combative by the other side in the deal. And that's absolutely not what you want. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because one of the questions that I'm asked by searchers who hire me to help them find deals is for some direction on hiring an attorney. And I tell them, hire an attorney who can prove that they will do whatever it takes to get the deal done. Deals that should be done need to be done. Can't that's say it exactly, any better way. That's exactly right, Ted. And I think one of the keys there is reasonableness. And a lot of times, again, because your client hasn't been through this process, they don't really have anything to give them a gauge as to what is reasonable. And that's really where an experienced M&A attorney can help. And I'm not saying in a deal you can't have idiosyncratic terms, but you definitely don't want each term in the deal to be special. To the degree that you're having unique terms, it needs to be driven by a unique aspect of the transaction. And I think a part of that too is using an attorney as a buffer can help keep emotion out of the process, which is usually the way to go. In fact, right now I'm doing a deal with two parties and the same two parties explored a deal last year and it fell through. And the reason they're back at the table is because they were civil throughout the process. Well, Scott, what, what, what was the problem and, and what, what did it take for you to get the parties back on the same page? Sure. So last year, the seller who I'm representing had a brand new, big new customer that was going to drive a lot of revenue. So obviously, since that came in as part of the deal process, the seller then wanted an increased valuation for the business. The, um, the potential purchaser saw it a little bit differently because the revenue hadn't materialized yet. So they decided to part ways. And now that the revenue has fully materialized, they're back at the table about to get a deal done. Wow. And you know, we're probably seeing a lot of that right now during this pandemic where the, the situation among the companies are, are radically changing. It's happened month by month. Yeah, th this deal is certainly the rare situation where the valuation has gone up um, in, in the COVID, although it has nothing to do with what's currently going on right now. Talk, talk to us about killing deals that, well, that should have been killed. Sure. So once I had a deal where my, my, I was representing the buyer and they were trying to buy a business on relatively fair but protective terms. Unfortunately, the other side was obstructionist, largely driven by the lawyer. For instance, we were tasked with drawing up the purchase agreement. And so we went to the time and expense of doing that. And then instead of marking up our form, 
we got the um, the seller's form back, which we had to totally rewrite with our provisions. And, and that just shows an inflexibility there. And I think, you know, typically you can work with the other within the other party's framework. And that's just an instance that if they wanted total control of the document, they should have said that from the beginning. And this was just something where we were getting bit at every every corner of this transaction. For instance, they wanted to do a unique structure for certain tax reasons and things like that. And it turned out that nobody would lend on it. And sort of the final straw was since they were going to do a cash sweep at closing, they were going to take that we were going to take the company without any cash was that they were processing a bunch of inventory on an accelerated timetable to get that AR to come in before closing which would have gone to my client had it occurred past closing. So that was just sort of a deal where we realized, hey, this isn't a fair, a fair transaction. And my client chose to walk away, which was the right choice. Okay, listeners, particularly you searchers, sometimes the best deal is no deal. And, and speaking of that, Scott, talk to us about lawyers killing deals. For sure. So I think that's a great, a great um, question. Lawyers emphatically do not kill deals. The lawyer's role is to explain risk involved brought on by certain terms in the transaction agreement and also just due to the circumstances. It's the business person's job, the client's job to evaluate that risk in the face of, of the business opportunity that's available. Obviously, the greater the opportunity, the more risk a client may be willing to take. The smaller the opportunity, the less risk a client is typically willing to take. And of course, lawyers weigh in on that, but ultimately it's always the client's decision. Yeah, that's something uh, you searchers need to be thinking about. You need to keep all of your advisors in their lane of expertise and realize it's your money, it's your risk. Well, thank you, Scott Weevil. How can people get in touch with you? Sure, you can reach me at my website, which is www.weevillaw.com. Okay, and they can find you on LinkedIn too, right? Correct, they can find me on LinkedIn or email me at scott at weevillaw.com and my website has all types of different contact information, phone, text, everything like that. Okay, listeners, I'm Ted Leverett. I hope what you heard is going to be valuable for you. Hey, you can learn more in my books. How about how to prepare yourself and find the right business to buy? Or if you found a deal and it looks like a deal you want to do, how to buy the right business the right way? You will save time, you will save money, you will make a better deal. Okay, I'm Ted Leverett, the business buyer advocate with Partner on Call Network saying thanks for listening and best wishes for your prosperity.